That track was Bring You Back Home by Ms. Olivia Millershin here on Recess with Spinelli. WSPN 91.1 FM Skidmore College Radio. And today in studio, we have uh, for a live acoustic set and interview, Ms. Maria Brosgill from Albany, also known as Belle Skinner. And hopefully, as long as everything is turned up here, let's uh, see if we can get her to say hi. Thanks for uh, stopping on by the studio. It's great to have you here with us. Thanks for having me. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, first time I saw you was actually at One Caroline Street opening up or playing alongside with Ms. Mary Lee Ruhan. But I believe you're originally scheduled to play in Boston Spa, and there was a very last minute reassignment there. Uh, but it wasn't rained out, though, to my understanding, right? No, it was, uh, it was canceled last minute. Um, there was a, a little bit of drama or. Something happened, so it got canceled, and so I found out at 10 o'clock the night before, and then at 10 o'clock in the morning, the day after, Mary Lee Ruin messaged me on Facebook and asked me to play for this last-minute gig. Now, is that the first time you've ever played uh, with Mary Lee? Yes, it yeah. was, yeah. That's the, I met her like a few days before that, too, so mm -hmm. it was a nice kind of coincidence. Have you, have you ever played at One Caroline Street in Saratoga before? No, I have yeah. not. Actually, what are your thoughts on that little place? It's nice. Yeah. They have good food. It's a nice, cozy place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I wouldn't mind playing there more. But. Yeah. It was because it was a couple hour set, wasn't it? Yes. It yeah. was, yeah, two 45 minute sets per player. Mm -hmm. yeah. do, do you typically play a lot in Saratoga or mostly in Albany? Um, I think it's more so in Albany, but pretty close. Like, yeah. Split. Yeah. Actually, do you have a, a tour date coming up pretty soon in Saratoga that folks can know about? Uh, yes, it is October 8th October 8th? at the um, United Preservation Hall. Oh, are they reopening then? I think so. Or is that before they close down for renovations? I, I haven't kept track of this. <laughs> I, I, this is the first time I've heard of it. They may be reopening after renovations, but I'd have to double check. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a neat little place. If yeah, That's it. That's awesome. They, they've been doing a lot of work there, and it looks pretty cool. And I think they're also doing more. I think I just got to check my timeline on this one. Yeah. All right. Hey, let's jump into our, our first track for this evening. I understand it's Desert Waltz. Is there anything you want to tell us about this? Um, well, I could, I mean, there's probably a long story behind it, but um, it's sort of inspired by the book uh, Sheltering Sky by Paul Bowles. And it was written during a time when I was in London and about to leave and traveling a lot and thinking about changes and, and things like that. All right, well, let's roll into it. Uh, you are listening to Recess with Spinelli here on WSPN 91.1 FM, Skidmore College Radio. Live in studio, we have Maria of Bell Skinner for all you cool cats and lazy dogs. <laughs> Forever, but 
say you're sorry, don't take it back. And that track right there was Desert Waltz with Bell Skinner live in studio. WSPN 91.1 FM, Skidmore College Radio, and Hoxton FM, London, England, sharing inspirational art, music, fashion, and culture. The time is 9.28 p.m., and if you're just joining us, welcome. And uh, Maria, thanks for joining us in studio again. Thank you for having me again. Now, that song definitely uh, seemed reminiscent of something I could expect to hear in the Anastasia movie. Uh, do you have a large influence of Russian music? Anastasia? Like yeah, the Disney yeah, cartoon? Yeah, that, that's kind of what was coming to mind. Oh my gosh, like, Russians hate that movie. <laughs> no, no not, a good, not a good movie for Russians. <laughs> but, um... But as, as far as, like, the, the songs, like, the I, the way the so- some of the songs sound, though. Uh, I would say that I do have a European-Russian influence, like, um, soundtracks from you know, old Soviet movies. There were a lot of um, bards, like, <clears throat> playing on guitar and singing these kinds of melodies, I suppose. Um, also, I grew up listening to a lot of French music, too. Mm-hmm. So I only realized till recently that someone came up to me and asked me if I listened to French music, that it was kind of an influence on me from childhood. Actually, are there any French uh, or Russian singers that you, you definitely love listening to? Um... Oh gosh, I, I, um, Nikitin is a very famous Russian one, um, but I, I can't, I can't name any other names. <laughs> um, they're just like kind of, uh, filtered in. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't know specific names. Just like movies from songs, and then, um, like for the French one, like Barbara. Barbara mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, Charles Aznavour, and I've been listening to a lot of Francoise Hardy again. Um, so, those I, artists. No, I think I've actually heard you sing uh, a couple of tunes in Russian in the past, either on other radio stuff or live. Oh, yes, maybe. I did. Now, I mean, are, do you speak Russian fluently, or did you just learn those lyrics for that song? Um, I speak it on my resume, it says fluently. So, <laughs> um, but. Um, I'm not, you know, completely fluent. I started speaking it when I was 17, um, but I studied it in college, and I studied in Russia for s- two semesters, and I speak it at home, or try to. So I would say I'm conversational. So how would you then introduce yourself and say, hi, my name is Maria, and I'm a singer-songwriter. Uh, uh, take a listen to my music or something. I don't know how to <laughs> say singer-songwriter, but I say... Uh, Привет, меня зовут Мария или Маша. Маша is my Russian nickname. Um, я играю на гитаре, я пою, я сочиняю песни. Uh, послушай мою музыку, пожалуйста. <laughs> <laughs> Very, that's, that's definitely not a language you hear too often on uh, radio waves here in upstate New York. So you, you studied abroad, though, in Russia for two years, you said? Uh, no, two semesters. Or two semesters. For okay. two completely separate things. Um, the first semester was... Uh, I studied at uh, the Moscow Art Theater, so I, I did a semester of like intense theater studies in Russia. So, <laughs> is is theater in Russia different than theater in the U.S.? I don't know. Um, I is there like an obvious cultural difference? Well, there? there's the Russian theater had a huge influence on theater in the west because of Stanislavski and Chekhov Mm -hmm. and that's the school the school that I went to Amhat was where like they staged those plays for the first time and 
where that method, the Stanislavski method, was um, taught, first taught. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was your one of the reasons, and what was the other purpose you were over there for? Uh, I got a grant to study classical guitar there, but it didn't work out, so um, I had to reapply um, for something else. And so I ended up reapplying for music production in London. So that's how I ended up in London. Ah, well, uh, quickly going back to the Russia, did you um, did you do any sort of singing or performing while you were there, like at bars in Russia at all, or no. cafes or anything? I only started performing in front of people after I came back from Russia. Like I did a few open mics. I had terrible stage fright, and I still kind of feel nervous. But before it was really, really bad. Um, I started really playing in London. Mm -hmm. Like, I went to open mics and, and bars and those kinds of things. And that's where uh, you recorded, I think, uh, your last EP? Yes. Right? Yeah. So I put together bands uh, with students at my school and recorded with them. It was really nice. So, I mean, how was the, how was the London experience recording um, over there as opposed to doing recording over here? Well, it was the first time I had ever been in a real studio because I did I did a kind of demo before that my last year uh, of college and it was in a classroom and on a laptop and stuff. But this we had like a real console desk and everything, and I had a band this time. And um, how how was it? It was. It was really, it was cool. It was like the next step up, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, the results were good. Did you find yourself singing with a British accent at any point? Uh, no. Did... But I got me. <laughs> I I love British accents. Um, I used to have one. I used to. I grew up two years in my childhood. I was in in London, mm -hmm. and I did have a British accent when I was a kid. Then I lost it. But um, people would always make fun of me when I was w one of three Americans at my school. And whenever I said, like, water bottle, they would be like, water bottle, you mean? <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, but it was cool. Yeah. It actually, sounds like you've done quite a bit of traveling. Oh, yeah. Any, um, any other countries you, you've hit up that have been really neat? I went to, as a kid, uh, France. We have friends in France that we visited a lot. It was easier living in when we lived in London. Um, Spain, Italy, uh, Canada. <laughs> um, that's pretty much it. Like I've been to Scotland. So that's it. <laughs> I've been to like France several times, Russia several times, Italy twice. That, that, that's quite a few so, places to hit up. So yeah. do do you speak other languages as well besides Russian and English? Um, I took I studied French in high school, and surprisingly, I haven't forgotten it. I mean, I forgot a lot, but I haven't forgotten the basics. And so I can listen to French songs and kind of more or less understand what they're singing about. It's more than me. I've tried for a couple of years at university French and I still can't retain a thing for it. <laughs> but so do you do you try a lot of singing in either French or uh, Russian normally? Um, yeah, actually, now that I'm listening to Francoise Hardy, I learned um, a song and then I translated it into English because I'm like, people are not going to understand <laughs> what I'm singing about. So... Yeah, and yeah, there there are songs that I learn in French. I don't necessarily perform them in mm -hmm. front of people. Now, actually, would you say that there's any sort of topics that, being that you've been all over, uh, that either British singer-songwriters, uh, similar to your field, your genre, versus French and versus Russian, tend to sing about? Is there a large difference, or is it all pretty similar? I think... I think it's pretty... <laughs> similar i don't know we're all human we all so besides the, the language you can move around pretty easily yeah from country to country i think so yeah yeah that's pretty cool it's neat all right so let's uh what's the next track i think it was i can't read my own handwriting it's, uh, and then you leave is that right yeah it's a hash like i call it uh, and then you leave and then parentheses go on mm -hmm. um so yeah and what's the lowdown on this track it's sort of like uh, a 50s kind of song. 
I don't know. It's pretty self-explanatory once I start singing it. All right, let's roll into it. You are tuned in to Recess with Spinelli here on WSPN 91.1 FM, Skidmore College Radio out of Saratoga Springs, New York, and Hoxton FM, London, England. And today we have Maria of Bell Skinner live in studio for an acoustic set and interview. And this is her track, And Then You Leave. I saw it coming all along I asked, you told me nothing was wrong But I could see it in your eyes One look and it was goodbye Everybody just joining in, uh, you're tuned in to Recess with Spinelli here on WSPN 91.1 FM, Skidmore College Radio, and Hoxton FM, London, England. And today in studio, we have Maria of Bell Skinner. And uh, many special thanks to everybody tuning in. I just noticed uh, John, Brandon, uh, Caitlin, and Jocelyn are all tuned in right now. And uh, Jocelyn actually made a comment saying that she, you remind her of a little Joni Mitchell. What do you think about that? <laughs> a little Joni Mitchell. <laughs> Um, I get that a lot, actually. <laughs> not oh, really? The, not the little part, but, yeah, the Joni Mitchell comparison. Yeah. Do you listen to Joni Mitchell? Uh, you know, I wouldn't say that she's, like, I didn't grow up listening to her. There was, I think last summer, I went through a Joni Mitchell, f- mm-hmm. nope, two summers ago, I went through a Joni Mitchell phase where I learned a bunch of her songs. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and watched her biography and everything. And I like her. I like her. Um, but I wouldn't say that <laughs> she um, influences me too much. But you can understand where it's coming I from. I can understand where it's coming from. Actually, what would you say uh, would be some of your more powerful influences? Did you grow up in a very musical household at all? or? Um, I grew up listening to whatever my family listened to. So my mother, who had her... European sensibilities, and then my my older brother and sister were five and six years older than me, um, so they introduced me to like indie rock and whatever was you know popular and alternative at the time. So Radiohead and um, Blur and I don't know Gorillas and stuff like that, as well as Sufjan Stevens. Actually, basically, I stole all my siblings' music, mm -hmm. burned it on my computer, and listening to it on my own is when I like really latched onto something like that I really liked, like Sufjan Stevens. When I first heard his song, I was like, it was just an instrumental song, and it was so different, and that's when I got hooked. Do you remember the was that the first CD you ever got, or do you, do you remember the first CD you actually went out of your way to purchase at a store? Uh, um. No, I don't. Oh, probably Spice Girls. Spice Girls? <laughs> was that was that on cassette or CD? <laughs> cassette. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. They came, they were big when I was in England too. Um, so that was that happened. Um, my first like recollection recollection of an album that I that I considered mine <laughs> was actually um, it was a VHS of ABBA's gold <laughs> greatest hits music videos so that's where it all started that's was with where it ABBA. all started I love ABBA <laughs> I will not I will not hide it I think their music and arrangements are really great mm -hmm. so <laughs> weird tidbit about ABBA is I think before Spotify they were Sweden's largest export which I'm, is weird to think I, about <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, that, that's when I think you know you've accomplished something. You are the largest export of your country. So that, that's ABBA in a nutshell. Well, there are lots of, yeah, there are lots of good Swedish artists, too. Yeah. Like, a third of my school in London was from Sweden. Really? Yeah. Did, wow. Yeah. And this is just because it was a music school, primarily? Yeah, it was a music school. So, yeah. I guess it definitely makes sense for the culture, doesn't it? Because yes. they... I feel like all the producers coming out from like Avicii all the way up are all Swedish nowadays. Yes, yeah. Now, do, does anybody else in your family uh, play an instrument? My brother, um, he's really good at piano. He actually, he introduced me to guitar when I was 15. I don't know, he gets these ideas, he gets bored and decides <laughs> to teach me something. Like when I was 12, he taught me touch typing one day randomly. And then when I was 15, he was like, here's a guitar. Um... And just kind of introduced me to the concept of a chord. And I chose Candy Says by Velvet Underground to learn. Um, and he kept, like, showing me a chord and leaving the room. And I got too impatient, so I just Googled it. And that's how I learned. <laughs> like, he basically, like, threw me into the pool. And that's how I learned how to play guitar. But then I dropped it for a while and then picked it up in college. So do you ever play with him uh, at present day? Uh, we don't. What we do is when he comes to visit, we're, like sing he'll he'll like show me songs that he's learned and then um like we'll sing harmonies <laughs> and and then uh there was a point where I, I picked up the bass I completely forgot how to play it now so I would play bass along <laughs> with him mm -hmm. but yeah I don't see him too often so so n no family collaboration in the near no future no family collaboration no um no <laughs> Now, actually, I briefly want to touch on the connection and how we actually got you here in studio, uh, because we had Mr. Shlomo Franklin come on in with Patrick Collins, and then he made the introduction uh, to you uh, and recommended that you come on on, because you're you're here locally in the vicinity. Yes. So out of curiosity, how do you know uh, Shlomo? Um, okay, well, going far back, I went to NERFA, which is New England Regional Folk Alliance, back last November. And then I met someone there that does house shows in Brooklyn, and he invited me to do a house show at the Haylot or something. He, like, does something with Make Music New York. And so a bunch of people were there, and Shlomo was there, and he mm, talked to me and then messaged me afterwards. And, yeah, he's super nice. Mm -hmm. So, Actually, uh, about New York City, you're going to be moving there pretty soon, aren't you? Yes, I am. Excited or nervous? 
Um, I'm like too. Uh, there's too much stuff to do <laughs> for me to be particularly like excited. Um, but I am, you know, in general excited. Let's just say. Is everything packed or? No, I have not started. I quit my job last week. I am busy mixing um, my EP, which I want to get done before I leave next week. Ooh. And yeah, it's very, it was all very like all of a sudden, very last minute, kind of the news hit me last minute. <laughs> In well, why why, do you, why are you deciding to move down to the city? Um, well, I have always intended to do it, and um, my friend uh, who wants me to live with her and some other people, her lease was up, and she got a, an apartment September 1st, and she was like, you want to live with us? And I said yes. So um, right now, my friend's going to live there for the first 12 days, mm -hmm. and um, then I'm going to move in. Well, when you get down there, you should definitely hit up Shlomo. He seems to know all the places where to play down there. Yes. He seems to be connected with all the musicians. Yes. Definitely get in touch. By the way, Shlomo, if you're listening, hi. <laughs> thank you for listening, Shlomo. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's uh, get on with our third track here. Uh, this is Ludo Little Cuckoo Bird. Yes. Anything you want to say about this? Um, let's see. No, I don't think so. It did take a while to write, but... Um, I came up with it in San Francisco last year, visiting my friend. I write songs when I travel. Like, that's when the inspiration really hits. All right. But For everybody just joining, you're tuned in to Recess with Spinelli here on WSPN. <laughs> Whiskey Sierra, Papa November, 91.1 FM, Skidmore College Radio, Saratoga Springs, New York, and Hoxton FM, London, England, live in studio for an acoustic set and interview. We have Belle Skinner, and this is Little Cuckoo Bird. Little cuckoo bird Why you sitting in the hollow tree While you're singing in the ivy Don't forget about me Have you ever heard What they say about the carefree did you ever really care for me, little bird high in your tree? Little, little one, only you know what I'm thinking of. I am dreaming of my one true love when you open up and sing. And all the other birds, they don't know they don't compare with me. Things that you know how to do, you see. Little bird, but do you see that my heart is breaking every time I think of you leaving for the night? So young winters come soon, you'll slip away. How I wish that I could keep you safe here in my arms forevermore But I know it can't be so, I hate to see you go Little, little one, only know one thing before you That you sing And maybe someone new Would be happy if they heard your song But I pray that it won't be long Till you come back in the spring Sweetly 
And little cuckoo bird, I'll remember you remember me. Though I never could be carefree, don't forget about me. Live in studio, Bill Skinner, WSPN, Whiskey Sierra, Papa November, 91.1 FM, Skidmore, College Radio, and Hoxton FM, London, England. Shout out to Mary Lee Ruhan and Patrick Collins for tuning in. It's always great to know that people are listening. The time is 9.53 p.m., and that track right there was Little Cuckoo Bird. Uh, so, briefly, uh, earlier you mentioned that you were going to be quickly working on to master and finish your second EP. Yes. Yep. What can we expect from this? Is it going to be, are you going in a different direction at all? Is it going to be the same sound as the last one, Operator? No, it's going to be different because Operator was more definitely influenced by uh, the the band that had jazz kind of influences. Um, this one was done mostly by myself. It's got... A lot of different things. Um, there's a track that's sort of, el- it's got sort of electronic kind of. Um, there's one that's like big band retro. There's some that are very sparse and some that have like eerie violins and yeah. So it's it's kind of it's very eclectic. So what would you say would be your go-to track on this? EP that what's going to be the single? What's going to be the first thing? Oh, the single. To hear? Oh well, you know, um, just because maybe it's just because um, it's one of the first ones that's already been mixed, um, and then you leave, which I recorded in um, Nashville Nashville Recording Company's studio with uh, Jesse Bolduck oh, and cool. John Cantiello from Candy Ambulance. And it's got this really cool, big sound that I'm really pleased with. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So it sounds different from what we heard in yeah, today's Yeah, one, this one's like, the one I played is a low-key acoustic, but this one's, I don't know, big. Mm-hmm. It's good. Now, let's go in, actually, for your writing material, uh, when you're looking for inspiration, you did say that you find travel is the time that you're most productive. It's Why travel cool. as opposed to maybe sitting down in your room? Because you don't see anything when you're sitting in your room. Uh, And also, I walk a lot when I'm traveling, and when I walk, melodies pop into my head. Um, And usually something's going on. Like, I'm reflecting on life, or like, if I'm traveling, there's something happening in my life, most likely. Um, But another form of travel that inspires me, because I don't really like to write songs explicitly based on my life Mm -hmm. so i i use uh books and film and things like that for writing songs so that's another kind of travel in a way so you mix travel with uh literature and film in a way to tell a story yes actually well when you're listening to other music what is your favorite form or favorite type of story to listen to in the song that I'm hearing? Yeah, if you're, if you're listening to a, a song on the radio or a song on the disc, is there a specific style of song or a specific story, specific type of narrative that you find yourself gravitating towards? I'll listen to any song um, if it's well done. So my tastes are kind of all over the place. I don't... I don't, I don't discriminate against a love song mm-hmm. or, you know an angry song or you know something that's completely lewd and crass as long as it's done well um well if you're sitting down uh, as a listener and for the first time hearing your music but not written by you written by somebody else just happens to be the same song over the airwaves what would be some thoughts going through your head as a listener and not as the writer if that's possible well actually this, is, this might sound bad, but I just know throughout my life the songs that I first love the most 
I don't listen to the lyrics. I listen to the melody and the way it sounds. I'm more drawn to that. And then once I listen to it more and more, and then I realize that the lyrics are really good, then I love it even more. So um, that's kind of what I'm listening for. It's the feel of the song yeah. or something that it stirs up, you know, deep inside. But you keep digging for more golden nuggets to find every time you listen, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a curse or a blessing. I was talking about this earlier before we started. You know, I can't listen to music anymore without analyzing it or, like, you know, the songwriter side of me and the producer side of me. So, um, but, you know, if a song can grab me and make me listen without analyzing, and that still happens, um, then I'll latch onto it and then kind of dig deeper into mm -hmm. it. So does that mean that you put down uh, the melody on paper first before you put down your lyrics? When I write? Yes. No. I think the best songs come when they come at the same time, which is really hard. Um, I have... I always have voice memos on my phone and snippets and... Um, it's really... it. There's no formula. I like sometimes the melody comes first, sometimes the lyric comes first, the chorus or something like that. All right. Let's uh move on to our next song. I believe this one was called Siren Song, right? Yes. And any good information you want to pass on pass along about this? Yeah. Um well, speaking of, you know, influences from literature and I don't know, music. This one, hold on, I need to take a drink. <laughs> This one was kind of influenced by uh, Dvorak's Song to the Moon. I used to take classical singing, so I sang this aria um, in the, from the opera Rusalka. And Rusalka is a Russian mermaid, and in Russian folklore, mermaids can climb trees, and they're not, they're not very kind to humans. So How in does terms a mermaid climb a tree? I don't, it's like a spirit, but also a, in the water, by a lake. Like, when I wrote this song, I, I had the image of a willow tree, and then there's a rusalka siren sitting up in the willow tree, and there's a lake, and she spots her next victim, and she starts singing to him, and seduces him, and then drowns him. So... <laughs> Pleasant. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I forgot about this, but I was also, like, thinking about it, and the movie Under the Skin with Scarlett Johansson. Have you heard of it? Nope. She's an alien that comes to Earth and she seduces men and then takes their skin. And then she, like, <laughs> empathizes with them in the end. And a After she's taken their skin? Like, through the course <laughs> of the movie. Yeah. So that was, a, that was an idea. So this piece, though, is largely based uh, in Russian folklore? Yeah. Or inspired? Inspired. There's so many different pieces mm -hmm. to it. The only other Russian tale I can think of is Baba Yaga. Is that Baba Russian? Baba Yaga. Yeah. With a house on chicken yeah, 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 yeah. legs. Actually, I think I remember that from like Arthur or something. <laughs> I think they talked about it on that and, TV show. And instead of a broom, she flies on a mortar and pestle. <laughs> it's so funny. You gonna write a song based on that one? <laughs> uh, I'll think about it. Maybe a, maybe a Halloween song. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get back to it here on Recess with Spinelli, WSPN 91.1 FM, <laughs> Skidmore College Radio, Hoxton FM, London, England. We have Bill Skinner in studio with Siren Song. It's close to midnight and through the up through the trees I'm looking down at you look through to me look you to me I'm on a moon I took your heart too soon Getting late and I am heading in for a 
first swim And then you and I take off our skin Slip off your skin I'm on a mistake I hope my heart won't break I'm on a mistake I've seen it all happen before Turn beautiful to cannibal I need someone, I need a reason To keep me from getting full From letting go I'm letting go Turning Turn beauty to an animal I need someone I need a reason To keep me From getting full You're getting cold Already cold To me And now we're slowly Sinking deep into The deep lagoon Bell Skinner live in studio. Son is Siren Son. And I just want to say that I'm really glad technology is working. Uh, this is our first time trying to use uh, Facebook Live here in the studio. And we've had a, a great turnout with folks listening in. Uh, new folks just joined in. Colin McNichol, Chantal Gibson, and Felice Marcuccio. Many thanks for listening. And to you, Maria, thank you so much, so much for joining us here in the studio. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for having me. So the important stuff that folks need to know, where can they get your work and where can they currently listen to your work? Um, well, I recently put everything in one hub, uh, bellskinner.com, bell-skinner.com, so you can find um, my Bandcamp releases and my SoundCloud tracks. So I, I record some covers, too, on SoundCloud. Um, but in general, you can find my uh, recent EP, uh, from last year, operator at bellskinner.bandcamp.com. And hopefully within the next few weeks or so, a second DP will be on there as well? Yeah, probably in a month. In a month. Let's so give it a month. We'll shoot for a month. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And do you, as far as tours go uh, or concert dates, uh, just want to repeat what we have coming up soon? Um, so uh, this Friday, actually, will be my last uh, gig before I move. Um, so what day is that? That's the second. Um, at Emac and Bolios in Albany, I'll be doing um, a set with um, some touring artists. And then October 8th, uh, when I have already moved to the city, I'll be coming back to Saratoga uh, to the United Preservation Hall. 
You know, I think what you really need to check out is when Cafe Lena reopens. Have you ever yeah. played there before for like an open mic? Um, I played. I actually like. I started playing before I started playing shows in Albany. I started going to Cafe Lena's oh, cool. for the open mics, and then they renovated it. And yeah, I played there for the last time like in April or something. Yeah. Oh, so right, right before they moved for the renovation. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, it's supposed to be bigger, better, and not so crooked when you're walking along it. But I like <laughs> crooked things. The I crooked don't know. walkway. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe uh, once it re- reopens, they can go over there. Yeah. Well, it's nice that they're doing it to be handicap accessible, right? Right. That's what it I wasn't. Heard. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> we got those massive stairs going all the way up. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, final thoughts? Anything else you would like to leave our listeners with? Oh, Besides your lovely voice. That's a lot of pressure. A final moment of zen. No, I don't know. I I had a really good time. And, you know, I actually, I do want to say that, you know, as I'm getting closer and closer to leaving, I realize how uh, appreciative I am to be surrounded by so many wonderful um, local musicians. Um, and, yeah, so... I just want to say thank you to all my friends, and I, I don't know if I should name drop because then I'll feel bad if I leave anybody out, but you know who you are, <laughs> and yeah, so I'll, I'll be, I'm sad, I'm like tearing up right now, so that's all I wanted to say. <laughs> all right, well thanks for coming in, it's great to, to finally meet you, and to finally hear your music, and it, it definitely finds its way into our rotation, most assuredly. Okay, thank you. All right, for everybody just joining in. Uh, you are listening to Recess with Spinelli, WSPN 91.1 FM, Skidmore College Radio, and Hoxton FM, London, England.